Many people believe that the sun causes skin cancer. But did you know that moderate levels of sun exposure can protect you from many diseases, including cancer? In this video, you're going to learn about the health benefits of vitamin D from the sun. After that, I'm going to talk about why we become vitamin D deficient and how to fix it. And finally, I will reveal why you shouldn't fear the sun and why sunscreens are a fraud. So let's begin. From the beginning of recorded time, humans have worshipped the sun for its health benefits. Ancient people believed exposure to sunlight was necessary for life and good health. So the sun is as vital to your health and well-being as food, shelter, water and oxygen. Humans depend on sunlight to sustain life and health since our ancestors walked on this earth. So sunlight has a beneficial effect on our heart. Vitamin D levels from sun exposure lower the risk of several diseases such as cancer. Sun exposure helps build and maintain bone density and reduces fractures. If you don't have adequate vitamin D levels, you can't use calcium from your diet or supplement as efficient. Humans also need sunlight to control their biological clocks. Sunlight also makes you feel better. Those who avoid the sun miss out of the life-sustaining benefits of sun exposure. The vitamin D making starts with the sun. Sunlight consists of a mixture of electromagnetic radiation energy of various wavelengths. Ultraviolet or UV radiation consists of UVA, UVB and UVC. UVC get absorbed by the ozone in the atmosphere so they never reach Earth or human skin. UVA and most UVB reach Earth's surface to varying degrees but have different effects on your body. As much as 100 times more UVA radiation reaches the Earth's surface than UVB. Even though UVA contains much less energy than UVB, it's able to penetrate deeper into the layers of your skin. UVB is also the only form of UV radiation that stimulates the production of vitamin D. The chain reaction starts when UVB rays hit the skin's surface. The process creates vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is still inactive until both the liver and kidneys build 25 vitamin D. Vitamin D is fat soluble, so that's why you can store it in your body during winter months and release it as needed. So when the sun is at its highest point in the sky, the UV levels are more intense. The reason for this is because the UV radiation has a shorter distance to the Earth. In the morning or afternoon, the sun's radiation is weaker and makes it harder to generate vitamin D. At the equator, the solar radiation has to travel the shortest distance through the Earth's ozone layer. Therefore, the sun's radiation is most intense at the equator. So let's talk about how we become vitamin D deficient and what to do about it. There are several reasons we can become vitamin D deficient. The older you are, the harder it is for your body to make vitamin D from sunlight. More kids and adults spend their time indoors and don't get enough vitamin D. Certain cultures tell their women to cover themselves with heavy clothing that blocks out the sun. The more clouds there are, the less UV radiation can reach the Earth's surface. Pollution can filter out UV radiation so that less enters the Earth's surface. So if you live in a place with long winters, you get less sun over the course of the year. The UV rays cannot reach the Earth at the ideal angle for making vitamin D in the skin. For example, Edmonton, Canada can't make any vitamin D from September through April. New Yorkers cannot make vitamin D from November through February. The darker your skin, the harder it is to make vitamin D. Melanin, your skin's pigment that gives its color, acts as a natural sunscreen. So Africans have to spend at least two times longer in the sun than Scandinavians to get the same amount of vitamin D. When people of African descent live at northern latitudes, they often become vitamin D deficient. 
melanin rich skins are super protective against the sun's rays and can't convert it to vitamin D that great. So how do you know if your vitamin D is efficient? The way to know your vitamin D level is to ask for a 25 hydroxy vitamin D test also called 25 OH D test. The test measures the circulating form of vitamin D that the liver generates before the kidney is activated. The unit of measurement used for vitamin D is nanograms per milliliter. Dr. Michael Hollick is a sun expert. He says that you're deficient in vitamin D if you have 20 nanograms per milliliter or lower. Vitamin D insufficiency is between 21 and 29 nanograms per milliliter. And vitamin D sufficiency begins at 13 nanograms per milliliter. You should aim to have at least a 25 vitamin D level of at least 13 nanograms per milliliter, or even better, 40 to 50. Our most abundant source of vitamin D is the sun. Most of us need only a few minutes a day of sun exposure during the summer month to have healthy vitamin D levels. So the goal is not to get 10. You should only get enough sun exposure to maintain healthy 25 vitamin D levels. UVB exposure is good for you as long as you never burn. So most humans obtain their vitamin D from sun exposure between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. If you live in a place where you can't get enough sunshine, then there are other ways to get vitamin D. It's almost impossible to obtain an adequate amount of vitamin D from your diet. The top sources of vitamin D from the diet are salmon, mushrooms, fortified orange juice, cereals, bread, milk, and fortified yogurt. So most of these foods are not healthy. Therefore, the only other sensible way to get vitamin D other than the sun is through supplements. So there are two types of vitamin Ds used in fortified foods and supplements, vitamin D3 and D2. The vitamin D created in your skin is vitamin D3. Vitamin D2 comes from yeast. According to Hollick, vitamin D2 is as effective as D3 at raising vitamin D levels. So you can either get vitamin D2 or D3 and reap the same benefits. Hollick recommends that you take 1000 to 2000 international units of vitamin D a day. If a person is vitamin D deficient, then they may need to take 2,000 to 3,000 international units of vitamin D a day. A person who is severely vitamin D deficient should consult a doctor to get even higher doses. So one thing you will hear often is that the sun causes skin cancer. But I'm going to explain why you shouldn't fear the sun. The last quarter century, the sun went from revered to feared. So where did this fear come from? The cosmetic wing of the pharmaceutical industry started our fear of the sun. Drug companies can sell fear, but they can't sell you sunlight. So there's no promotion of the sun's health benefit. So aggressive educational campaigns funded by the cosmeceutical industry created an anti-sunshine hysteria. So they convinced everyone that no amount of unprotected sun was safe. So the campaigns made people fearful of the sun and their sales soared. They marketed the product as a way to prevent skin cancer. Most of the dermatology profession have bought into the lie. These groups tell people to stay out of the daylight. So there is little evidence that sunscreen prevents most types of skin cancer. Until recently, most sunscreens block only UVB radiation and not UVA rays. So the sunscreens enable people to stay unprotected against UVA rays for unlimited periods of time. So that raised the risk of melanoma in the United States and other Western cultures. Without any sunscreen at all, people will not have been able to stay out that long. So sunscreens today that are broad spectrum protect against most of UVA and UVB radiations. So when you wear sunscreens, you cannot generate any vitamin D. Instead of using sunscreens, wear more clothes to protect your skin or stay in the shade. The most common sunscreens on the market contain chemical filters. These products include a combination of two to 
six active ingredients. The most worrisome of these chemicals is oxybenzone. So oxybenzone can cause allergic skin reaction. So EVG found it in about 65% of the non-mineral sunscreen they tested. So you have a decreased risk of developing colon, prostate and breast cancer if you maintain adequate vitamin D levels. Melanomas are by far the most dangerous form of skin cancer and often fatal if left untreated. But there is no credible scientific evidence that moderate sun exposure causes melanomas. So every year people die of heart attacks while running or lifting weight. But no doctor would tell patients that exercise is unhealthy. So most doctors will tell you to take certain precautions when exercising. But none would ever advise you to not be active. So the same goes for sun exposure. Sunlight is not unhealthy. Regular, moderate amounts of unprotected sun exposure is necessary for good health. So avoiding the sun is like saying that water causes drowning, so don't drink water. Too much of anything can be a problem. There's a world of difference between moderation and excess. Just as we need a little fat and salt in our diet, we also need a little sun. So people who get regular, moderate sun exposure are less likely to get melanoma than those who don't get enough sunshine. So most melanomas also occur on parts of the body that receive little or no sun exposure. It's more dangerous to avoid sun exposure completely than it is to get regular moderate sun exposure. If you avoid getting sunburn, the benefits of sun exposure will far outweigh the cons. Your body signals when you had enough of anything. If you overeat, your body will tell you. The same happens when you are in the sun for too long. Your goal of getting sunshine is not to get tan. Instead, it is to get enough UVB rays to create vitamin D. If you respect your body's limit, then sun exposure shouldn't cause a problem. The sun is vital to your health and may protect you from several diseases, including cancer. UVB rays stimulate the production of vitamin D. If you live in a place with long winters, you get less sun over the course of the year. Therefore, you need to take either D2 or D3 supplements. There is little evidence that sunscreen prevents most types of skin cancer. Moderate sun exposure does not cause skin cancer. But now you should know that moderate levels of sun exposure can protect you from many diseases, including cancer. So download this ebook for free to learn how to get enough vitamin D and prevent cancer. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, then press the like button and subscribe to this channel. Share this video on social media with your families and friends. Please visit our blog at cancerwisdom.net to learn non-toxic ways to treat cancer. You can also download more free documents in our free resource library. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.